Hello, this is Yo Sensei. In today's tutorial, we will look at works of Zaha Hadid. Zaha Hadid is an Iraqi born architect who has influence in the contemporary architecture with organic forms and fluid surfaces. Let's take a look at several of her projects and try making those surfaces using Rhino 3D. Here we will look at of Zaha is um, the Riverside Museum. Uh, in Glasgow of uh, Scotland and uh, in this museum it has this kind of like uh, you know bent uh, line that is sweeping across the um, uh, building and uh, any cross section is intentionally cut like this uh, which is really interesting the purpose of this project is um, the museum of transportation so uh, the linear kind of uh, movement of the building makes a lot of sense. Okay, so let's get into that. So the first thing that you will do is to draw a straight line uh, like this on the top view. And uh, so what we will do is uh, we will uh, copy this object uh, object uh, in a... You should turn on the grid snap and then um, copy this object uh, at the same um, space in between. I mean, the grid snap is useful. So now uh, we have these lines. So now uh, we, these are just uh, lines with two control points and one degree. So we will run rebuild command. Rebuild. Uh, and change the point count to uh, six points and two degrees. So what it did was it created these, uh, changed these curves to uh, these curvy lines with uh, six, control, six control points. Uh, that's quite nice. So now what we're gonna do is uh, we will take it to the perspective view and um, move every other ones upward. Okay, so it will create a sense of kind of zigzag movement. So now uh, the next move is we will uh, click on record history, okay. record history, and then loft. But you have to loft uh, by clicking in the, in the right order. Okay. So now we have uh, this kind of surface. So now what we can do is um, we can click on this surface and then uh, we can change uh, ISO curve uh, density and just not show the ISO curve. So we will see uh, the lines uh, that are consisting uh, this this object. So what we're gonna do is select all of this uh, and deselect the surface by control and click and pr uh, type PON for uh, control points on. So now we are manipulating these curves by the control points of the um, Manipulating the surface by changing the control points of the curves that are making the surface. Okay, so in this case, we can have a really nice uh, control over uh, this shape uh, by manipulating the control points. Okay. Uh, we can uh, turn off the control points by pressing escape and then actually select. Um, all of the upper lines uh, and control click to deselect the surface and then you can you know manipulate the uh, curve as well so this way um, record history function is going to let you manipulate your object uh, using the previous curves uh, that gives you a lot more uh, detailed control if you move the surface like this uh, it will tell you that it broke the history. So uh, you won't be able to edit by uh, control surfaces. So please be, be careful about this, okay? So after that, uh, please uh, try with um, different type of uh, lofting uh, options. So in this case, this one did, did it with straight section. So uh, please go ahead and try it. Um, another way that this can work uh, in a nice way is that uh, if you turn on control points uh, and uh, take this one and then start, you know, scaling them, um, or you can even rotate this 
and then it becomes a very very dynamic uh, surface that you can play with um, that is very nice okay okay so that's for the um, first one the next one is uh, landscape formation one this is one of Zaha's early uh, projects that she did uh, in the border town between Switzerland and Germany. And uh, this project has this kind of like very linear and kind of beautiful um, intersection of volumes uh, in both planimetric and sectional way. Um, and um, yeah, this is a really beautiful project. Okay, so um, in this one, the way we want to do it is uh, we are going to use the loft tool, uh, but we will use them in a um, lofting through closed uh, curve. So uh, we're going to go into the front view and uh, draw a kind of a parallelogram type of shape. Okay. So now uh, we can copy this curve, uh, this closed curve by typing copy several times. Okay. And then uh, make sure record history is on and loft. Okay. So the seam of the loft is extremely important. In this case, uh, everything is the seam is on the bottom left corner and uh, the direction of the seam is going up uh, which makes sense um, but sometimes your seams are like in different places so you have to move click on the seam and then move it to the right place okay so now we have these um, four uh, four of these uh, again I can just turn off the ISO curve so that I I can see the uh, you know construction curves better so in this case what we're gonna do is uh, we are going to take some of these and um, kind of get them to go up and uh, create this kind of like snake type of movement and um, so you have to kind of like we adjust the curve to get them to be um, flow a lot more smoothly so you have to kind of massage the form uh, a little bit better. Okay, so this looks quite nice. Um, so again, we will try to create um, another set of uh, things uh, in here. So again, what we can do with this one is that um, you can also um, twist these uh, curves uh, and uh, I think that's going to give you interesting results also. So history is on, loft. And then uh, hide the ISO curves. So now uh, what we can do is maybe we can take this one um, and um, get them to move towards this side. Never move the surface, okay? Uh, move the, um, I think this history warning is coming from when I changed the, um, copied the curve. Uh, I think it, it was taking the same uh, history of that curve. So what I'm doing here is I am lightly twisting this uh, surface, uh, this curve, and it creates this kind of uh, very beautiful um, twisting movement, uh, which I think is really nice. Okay. And uh, so you can probably create something that will interact uh, between uh, these two uh, pieces of uh, geometry so uh, that would be pretty interesting so try it for yourself okay number three so the third uh, project that I would like to show you is uh, um, this is pro this project is a uh, hater uh, center in Azerbaijan by Zahar Hadid 
it's a really, really complex uh, project that has um, beautiful surface going up and down and twisting and, you know, surfaces are layering uh, in different ways. So uh, I think this is a, you know, very nice project that we can uh, try to mimic. So let's get to that. So uh, one thing that we can do is, uh, as we have been learning how to do uh, record history, uh, we can keep doing that. So we will have one line and uh, uh, rebuild command to uh, change it to, you know, six points and two degree curve. So that's fine. And uh, so I will copy this curve and um, then um, loft between them and uh, take out the uh, ISO curve uh, and uh, we will be looking at these points. Uh, Rhino 6 turns on the control points automatically, but if you run PON command, uh, then it will show uh, when it's not showing. Okay, so now we will take some of the uh, control points uh, and um, start moving them around. And then you can start to kind of, you know, wrap around some of the uh, surfaces. So this comes down. Then it will come back up, kind of. So right now, this surface is being made out of uh, two control uh, curves. And uh, that doesn't give me uh, more control over the y direction. So I'm just going to uh, copy one more curve and then try to get this geometry uh, out of three curves. Loft again. Okay. So, um, it's kind of letting me do it. Um, when you're doing something like this, I what I recommend you to do is to always uh, sketch what you want to do uh, before getting into Rhino. Um, and uh, it will give you a lot more uh, kind of control over um, what you actually would like to do. Uh, and um, it's not going to look like what Rhino has made for you. So, um, so now you can come up with this kind of, you know, uh, geometry roughly. And then uh, you can create this kind of like layered feel uh, by uh, copying the uh, surface several times. And uh, maybe the second one is, um, you know, hold shift and 1.2% uh, bigger. And the uh, third one is uh, 1.4 times bigger. Oops. Yeah, so by doing this, you can get, you know, sense of layering um, throughout the geometry. Um, Okay, so um, you will be, it's, it's, it's not something that you can design over five minutes, uh, but uh, by using this kind of technique and, uh, you know, uh, very, very carefully um, adjusting the geometry, uh, you should be able to model something uh, as complex as uh, this project. Okay, 
So, number four. Uh, number four is uh, sweep. And uh, Maxi is a uh, this contemporary art museum in uh, Rome, in Italy. And it's an uh, incredibly beautiful uh, museum uh, that I got to visit uh, last year. And um, this is one of the most, uh, you know, coolest places that I have ever been to uh, in the world. So it's highly recommended. So in this era of Zaha's um, design, uh, she favored a lot of straight lines uh, and uh, kind of like lines are kind of following through uh, to and using this fillet type of line. Uh, and uh, so that's, that's quite nice. So uh, we will try to uh, do that. So uh, on the top view, uh, we can create um, straight line. And uh, this time I will uh, rebuild it at six points, but one degree curve. So one degree curve is going to be a straight line. Okay. So now uh, we will copy these objects. Um, well, you know what? Uh, copy these, these objects this object uh, five or six times. Okay. So, uh, P O N. Um, I don't like how uh, separated they are. So you can take all of the control points and then uh, use the scale to tool to, um, you know, change the width of the entire thing. And uh, in this case, I think it's going to be more interesting if these uh, lines move in section, up and down. So uh, I think that would be quite nice. Okay. So uh, we will use the fillet command to, um, you know, create a curvature. So uh, in this case, fillet for uh, this one and this one, what was the number? Uh, 0 0.3, uh, I'm just going to use number one. Okay. Just give you, uh, one's a little bit too small, so, um, four. Um, there is also a fillet multiple. Fillet. Um, well, I don't know. So just, we can just do the fillet for all of these. Press space key to repeat last command. So we have all of these curves uh, with nice fillet. So uh, we will go to the front view and uh, we will draw a rectangle uh, about this big uh, at the end of the beginning. Um, does that make sense? So now we will do uh, sweep one, sweep one. So sweep one is going to let you use the rail curve and then sweep the shape. So uh, Rhino is gonna ask you for select rail. And right after, before clicking enter, uh, Rhino is asking for cross section curves. So we will click on this one. And um, yeah, that will do that. So uh, there are several options uh, in sweep, uh, which I want you to uh, explore uh, with. Um, you know, world light is going to 
give you more kind of straight type of form. Um, but sometimes, you know, in this kind of situation, it gets a little bit too um, tight. And uh, so when, um, I think it's the ratio between cross-section curve and the cur curvature is a little bit tight. So uh, you can just adjust that, okay? So I'm just gonna copy this one uh, several times. And then sweep one. Um, I'm just gonna do free form. Enough. Yeah. What's really nice about Rhino is that uh, you can just press your space bar to uh, repeat last command. So uh, repeating commands are very easy. Okay, so this gives you a really nice control over, um, you know, uh, this kind of like straight and uh, you know, fillet uh, mitered uh, corner, uh, it's really nice. So I'm just going to uh, do another version of this uh, while uh, being muted, mute, mute mark. So when you do this, uh, you can create this kind of uh, really cool shapes, uh, forms that are intersecting with each other uh, in this way. Uh, so, you know, this could be a really cool um, kind of science fictional type of uh, design as well. Okay, so the last one that I would like to show you uh, is uh, the Hadis. Uh, this is um, the, for the Bach, the JS Bach um, uh, kind of memorial music uh, event that they had. And uh, this is one of the smallest structures she made. Uh, but this is essentially a swirling uh, type of, uh, you know, uh, tent that goes through the space. And uh, it softly, it softly uh, surrounds the uh, space in a very, very fluid and beautiful way. Um, and uh, so uh, we are going to do that. So um, what we are going to do is to start by um, creating on top view, uh, more like a you know, loose uh, spiral type of shape. Okay. So now uh, we have this, and then uh, PON to um, turn control points on. And then we will select everything but the first control point. Uh, and um, deselect the first control point by uh, control click or uh, command click. And we will keep moving them by continuously deselecting the um, previous one. So we can create this kind of spiral that moves up in the space. Okay. Um, yeah, that's quite nice. Uh, but it's a little bit too, too high, so I'm just going to compress it. Now, I am going to create another one. Um, and um, then I would like them to start kind of narrow uh, and then um, start to kind of 
separate from mm. each other uh, and uh, in different ways uh, to create more kind of motion in between. Yeah, so we have, you know, kind of double spiral that is that are slightly different from each other. So now what we're going to do is um, if you lost between them, you can get still get this kind of, you know, ribbon type of uh, structure. Uh, that's quite nice. But what we are trying to do is this kind of like rounded uh, kind of cross section edge uh, that I think is quite beautiful uh, on this project. So uh, we want to, we, we will shoot for that. So to do that, um, we are going to um, run divide command. Divide. And divide this uh, line into uh, five segments. Okay. So uh, divide command will give us these control points, uh, you know, point point objects that are, you know, that we can use. Okay. So now uh, we can turn on object snapping for point, and then turn off project so that we can draw in three dimensional field. So we can draw a line between them, between control points. Uh, be careful, changing angles. So now what we want to do is we want to make these lines to be a little bit more rounded. So you can click on these objects. And then uh, rebuild. And uh, three points and one uh, two degree curve. Okay, three points and two degrees. So what it's going to give us is that, that when you turn uh, control points on by PON, uh, we can manipulate these uh, curves to be uh, the center point of these curves to be a little bit more rounded. So you can kind of like go to this top view and uh, you can uh, grab this grid handle and that is uh, X and Y uh, points. So to move them out and uh, get them to be a uh, little bit more rounded. So with this, uh, what we can do is we can run sweep to command. Sweep two. Sweep two is same as say, sweep one, but with uh, two rail curves. So first rail is this one. Select always read this. Select second rail, and uh, cross section curves. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then uh, we can have this kind of you know. Um, surface that is uh, organic and ribbon-like, but it, the sections are rounded. Uh, what more we can do is we can take these lines and then pipe, run pipe command. Um, okay. and, then, and then again, run pipe command. So now uh, we are able to create uh, this kind of, you know, very beautiful structure uh, that moves around. So uh, that was a quick uh, overview of how uh, you can create different types of surfaces using Rhino's various command uh, to um, build uh, beautiful surfaces like Zaha Hadid. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Uh, so please use this, use this for your project. Thank you.